Police in Houston, Texas have arrested two teen teenagers in connection with a vicious robbery, which left a mom of three paralyzed. That assault caught on camera. We want to warn you, each time we show this, just how hard the video is to watch and give you a moment if there are young ones with you to step away. This is surveillance footage showing one of the suspects grabbing that woman from behind, picking her up and slamming her to the ground. So you know you're defenseless then. And then he takes off from the scene. The woman had taken money out of an ATM and the suspects followed her for some 24 miles to that shopping center where they attacked her. Police say she was a victim of jugging. When criminals follow their victims to another location after they visited an ATM, meaning someone can be attacked nearly anywhere at any time. Emily, I, I don't know that you need a special category of crime to go after these guys. Uh, jugging. I, I don't even know, does it matter? What is this? The, to me, this is attempted murder. Right, and you can prosecute those under larceny and robbery and, and, and many of existing laws. The issue is simply that violent crime is trending upwards in this country, that it is being exacerbated by social media and a lot of other factors that we are seeing to absolutely terrify and paralyze our community, literally and figuratively speaking. We know now in D.C., where you live, that 67% of arrests are not prosecuted. That's up from 31% in 2016. So in the span of the last five years, 67% of arrests are not prosecuted. Why? Because there's no DA there, so it's up to the U.S. Attorney's Office. And he says, Harris, oh, it's from a lot of factors. It's because our crime labs have lost accreditation. It's because we have to rely on private labs for DNA testing. It's because of the misdemeanor felony um, line. It, it's a whole host of things. He's absolutely right, but that is why when people are faced with this binary choice and these slogans on signs outside of a window that, you know, criminal justice reform now, bail reform now, the reality is that every decision made by an elected official, every single piece of legislation that passes has an impact on the police department and law enforcement's ability to prosecute and investigate crimes. So when you defund the police, mm -hmm. you no longer have resources to investigate cold cases, to prosecute existing ones, to investigate perps. You are losing resources in all aspects. Forensic sciences, boots on ground, overtime. We just learned in this city that we paid overtime a hundred million dollars over budget yeah. because there wasn't anyone there to begin with, so they had to use overtime. Okay. So it's all of these myriad factors that stream and slew out from the woke left and the Democrats horrible lack of leadership and the horrible lack of foresight because every single one of these things was predictable. All right, just a quick follow-up to that. When you say that $100 million overtime overflow, which is, I mean, dangerous and ridiculous because now you've got people working like three shifts in a row. Well, no wonder people are leaving. No wonder the suicide rate is up mm -hmm. among the NYPD in the city. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yes. Can I make a point about yes. D.C.? Because I saw a report earlier that there was another one of these incidents where people are literally having their clothes stolen off them on the street. Wow. Yeah, is what happening. is that? So these That's expensive unreal. winter coats, the police in D.C. have warned people, don't wear them in public. In the winter... Don't wear your coat outside? Your Canada, Correct. Canada goose. Yeah. Yep, because yeah. people are getting mugged what do we wear? on the street to, like, take their clothes off their back, literally, and run off, sometimes at gunpoint. And, like, you just have to step back. You have the police department in the capital city of the United States of America telling residents not to wear their winter coats in winter because you have these roaming criminals who are stealing clothes from people on the street and the city council is busy trying to figure out how to reduce criminal penalties and how to extend the voting rights in D.C. to non-citizens. It's just absolutely mad-making. Mm -hmm. I, I just, Kennedy, how did we get to the marriage of Hunger Games and Mad Max? Yeah, th and this is their version of utopia. This is like the, the best of all worlds. Yep. And people are realizing in D.C., in Los Angeles, in Seattle, in Portland, they don't want that. That their quality of life is so diminished when you have to worry about your personal safety to the point where you can't wear a coat and when it's cold. And, you know, it's like I, I look at these two perps in Houston and I think about 
all the institutions that have failed them up until this point. Houston School is going to be taken over by the state of Texas because they have been failing miserably for so long, yeah. and these kids are seen as disposable, and then they go out, they become criminals, and human beings are totally disposable. And it is a failure on so many levels, uh, but we, we have to get back in touch with our humanity. And that is, unfortunately, a very difficult thing. I, I don't have an easy answer for that, but it certainly is the root of the problem. You know, uh, Kaylee, when people were saying, oh, we're tired of the, the mean tweets from former President Trump, we're going to go for Biden, a guy who's got a history of, you know, showing with his heart with the loss of family members, so on and so forth. How would you categorize where we are now and what's important to get us to go forward? Lawlessness and anarchy. I mean, I was just stunned by what you said, Guy. I had not heard that. I, I lived in D.C. up until the end of 2020. Uh, and to think, I haven't been back in a while. I went for a brief trip, but not walking the streets. To think you couldn't wear your winter coat. And then it's I remember crazy. coming to New York City after it had been several years. Uh, and it was 2021. And I landed and I felt unsafe. This was still during the COVID lockdowns. Um, like, you couldn't walk the street. Then I'd go home to my home state of Florida, lowest cr violent crime rate in 50 years, and it shows conservative policies work. We don't need new criminal laws. We need them enforced. And when you enforce them in the way like my governor has, uh, you see results. Real quick follow to that, because I know people watching this will say the spring break stuff that's breaking off in your state right now. I have seen your governor DeSantis get involved in everything. I yeah. mean, is he going to Miami? Hey, I, I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> Can't confirm. Don't I'd know, like to go to Miami. Hey, I, I'm sure he has an I eye. Mean, <laughs> he does. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.